if the clips that you've added to a montage are eventually going to be written in WaveLab as an audio CD or a DDP image, you'll definitely need to add CD markers to the beginning and ending of each clip. And you can do them manually or you can do them automatically. Let me show you the manual method first. I'm going to double click on the montage tab right here to move the editor back to its normal position. Then I'm going to go to the insert tab and I'm going to move my cursor where I want the first marker to go. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the audio file right here, this first clip. Then I'm going to add a CD track start marker, which is the red arrow pointing to the right. When I click on that, it adds the marker to the timeline. Then I can move to the end of the audio clip and you'll notice that it's magnetized to allow the cursor to be placed right at the clip edge. And then I can click the other track marker, which is the end marker. So each clip has to have a beginning and an ending marker. Then when I go to the next clip, I can move the cursor to the left edge and then add a CD track start marker and then continue on through the rest of the clips. However, there's a much faster way to do this, and that is with the CD wizard. So I'm going to undo the creation of those first three markers, and I'm going to go to the CD tab, and then you can either click the CD wizard button right here, or if you go to functions, you can choose CD wizard. You'll notice that the icon is the same as the button. And when you click on CD Wizard, what you're going to be applying are CD track markers to each individual clip. So the defaults for this are the Create CD Markers as Clips, but there are some other factory presets in here that you might want to use. Just make sure that you're on the Create CD Markers as Clips. And then I'm going to Generate CD Track Markers. And then one of the nice options is that you can have it adjust the pause before the tracks as the standard two-second gap. Or I really like to adjust the length between the songs or that gap between each of the songs manually so that I get a feel for how the CD is going to play from beginning to end. So if you want to have it throw in those pauses, leave this option checked. For right now, I'm going to disable that so that the transitions between the songs are the way that I have programmed them in the montage. And then these other settings can just be left alone. When you click the Apply button, you'll notice that all of the tracks will now have a CD start and a CD end, and the naming of each marker has been using the clip name as the marker name. So now it's easy to see these CD markers line up. And then another nice thing that you can do is if you adjust these settings, for example, if uh, you know we were talking about these two songs uh, fading, cross-fading from one to another, so if I did that, and I do have the, let's make sure I've got the ripple editing on global, and I do. So I'm going to come to this track, and I'm going to drag it over the other track. And you'll notice that the CD markers are now backwards from each other. So this is a problem. What we'll need to do is have this song fade in while the other one fades out, which you can do either on a track by track basis or on the same track. But what I'll want to do is remove this marker and this marker because these are track starts and ends and they're backwards from each other right now. So I'm going to right or control click and delete those markers. And what I'll want to do is move my cursor position in between those two files. And it's about right there that I want the CD track to start. So these two songs are going to crossfade over each other, but there's not going to be a gap. It's going to be continuous. But I'll need to use a specific marker type for that, which is the CD splice marker. When I add that marker, now there's not going to be any time difference on the CD player when this track plays out and this track plays over the top of it. So it's going to sound on the CD player once the CD is burned exactly the same way as it does in WaveLab. Thank you.
And then once you have all of your CD markers arranged, it's a good idea to come back to the CD tab, go to the functions menu and choose check CD conformity. If you have markers that are out of position, like they're not quite where they're supposed to be in the timeline, then it will give you an error message. Right now it's showing me that my track list is set properly and the CD length is 37 minutes and 7 seconds. And also, once you have those markers assigned to your list and you still have the ripple editing on, the really nice thing is that when you move an individual clip, you'll notice that the markers that are assigned to that clip boundary will move right along with it. And that makes further editing to the placement of those clips in time a breeze. So those are CD markers. Next, let's talk about the reference track.